And they're away. It's a good start for both our erstwhile favourites, Evenen and Vaselli. Rodeveld in third. Pozziat's gone to fourth. And Sartell fifth. I've never even in there wide in the first one. They sweep into the King Cobra turn the first time. Certainly even is looking a bit quite a bit looser. And you'd say in this first lap, Vaselli slightly quicker. Oh, Pozziat's pushed Rosenvall out, out of the way. And already Vaselli and uh, Evenen come together. And these cars are faster, more agile, more aggressive, more feral than the two-wheel drive you saw before you were babying around. Vaselli gets on the outside. And he almost gets pushed off there. And up the inside, and looking to gain from all this is Valentin Posia, who's kind of sitting back and watching Brady. Vasselli gets on the inside and takes the lead. So Vasselli, lovely move there. Gets up the inside and look, bullied out there. Even in the 14-year-old, bullied out by two older drivers as both Posia and uh, Vasselli get past him. Totally fair, but using all the muscles that he's built up over the years with Posia. And even drops to third, but there's a long, long way to go. Fourth, Stu Wood. Fifth, Sven Rodeveld. So what can Posiat do? He's been a little bit subdued, if I'm honest, so far. And interestingly, what is happening is Vaselli is pulling away slightly at the moment. Now, this is where we're going to test the mental strength of the 14-year-old. He needs to sit back and know it's a long race. In fact, Vaselli's doing a fabulous job. Absolutely playing down the metal with the MCD. He looked confident the whole time. Almost though he thought he might have now... There's a problem at the back of... Um, let's get Evening on at one. The Evening car on. There's something hanging out the back of his car. It's just some fluff. He's just picked up some carpet. That's fine. Evening's car has some carpet at the back of it. Fluff hanging about. He turns around, you see. He's just got some fluff at the back. That's not a problem for anybody. Now, Evening is the man on the move. He's going to be the man on the move. Stu Wood's keeping up with all this at the moment as we are just uh, the first two minutes on the third lap. In many ways, Vaselli, who broke, is just being slight. Oh, Evenen's car's looking a little bit evil on the rear end at the moment. I don't think it's that bit of carpet hanging off the back that's causing the problem. So Evenen are not really showing that lethal pace he showed in the semi-final, but this is a completely different thing. It's his first experience for a major European final. You know, it's all about the mental strength when you get to a 30-minute main final. And it's no surprise to me at the moment that it's Vaselli leading and it's... Posiat second, so that's Vaselli will be D.A.R. Darry. Oh, the mistake there, and through into fourth. So even now getting swallowed down to fourth, and Stu Wood takes through the third place. He's got Rodeville behind him as well. So even just needs to kind of even really now needs to give himself a good talking to. Think about what he's doing. He's got the pace, and he moves out there, and Rodeville gets him as well. So he's going backwards at the moment down to fifth. So it's not worked for even at the moment so far. Now, whether it's an anti-roll bar issue, I've got someone saying it's a yeah, rear anti-roll bar. Is, I don't think it is. I'll, I'll look at it as go past again. To me, that's just a lump of fluff. Has he got an issue with the car? No, that fluff's gone now. I think he's all right. I think that was just a, uh, a bit of bad luck off the Asher turf. But he has lost a bit of distance. And he's now actually dropped across another place. He's gone that down behind the nine car of Schweitzer. So this is not... The three and a half minutes that Peko dreamed about over lunch. He's dropped down to sixth. But this isn't the end of the world because now he can start moving back forward again and he's got plenty of time. He just needs to, I think, just need to get a couple of laps to get his rhythm, I think, really. That's what he's had the whole time. He's been out in front but with Peko. He's running in sixth. Just tell you that Vaselli's away. Perziat second. Stu Wood third. Rodenval fourth. Schweinz a fifth, even and sixth. You have to say that the even and machine doesn't look like it's handling as well as it was in previous parts of this event. So whether he has got a problem, and that bit of fluff hanging down was indicative of the problem or had been caused by the problem or was a problem caused by it, I, he picked the fluff by digging down hard into the, into the carpet, who knows? But he is now attempting to get back past Schweinz, the double European champion, from a couple of years ago. And these are the closest two cars on the track. Vaselli's lead is out to three seconds. Evenen now has to get past some very experienced people to make up for his poor start, his poor first three minutes. And we are nearly five minutes down. Now, if you can just find the speed he had in the semi-final, nothing's wrong. But of course, it is a bit drier now. A little bit quicker. We've seen a 40.081 from Vaselli. We might actually go sub 40 seconds for the first time in this race. Dario looking incredibly strong 
Interesting, Persia able to stay with him. Evenen, not so much at the moment. But this is the closest battle on the track, the Evenen Schweizer battle. So we're going to stick with this one because everyone else is just turning laps. Stu would be very happy to be in third. And there are five minutes and 14 seconds gone. And oh, Schweinzer opened the door there. Can even take it? He has. He can get the drive down and then break and turn. So even is starting his comeback now. The young Finn moves up to fifth. And if he can start now. Now, the thing he's got now, if he can just hold himself in his practice, he has got three or four seconds of clear track. And that's his chance just to get his head together, to get his rhythm before he comes up on the back of Sven Rodenwald. So let's leave Pecco and let's pick up our leader, Vaselli, who's about to go over, the, underneath us now, about to go over the tabletop. And that's Vaselli, whose car has looked superb in this final so far. Now, the one man who is doing particularly well, and we'll come to him in a few seconds, not immediately, is Posia, who's not really losing much of Vaselli, who's put in some blistering lap times gone sub 41 about three times now Vaselli with the MCD oh Vaselli's over Vaselli's over and that's Persia and they keep it take Persia he's in the lead so Persia takes the lead from Vaselli and let's look at that one again quickly we've got a chance he comes round and I can't see where it went wrong he put the power down he's running a, like a long wheelbase car and just turned it oh dear oh dear so Persia takes the lead the Frenchman well, he'd be on for another European Championship now. To all you Peko watchers, that's good news for him, but it's taken two seconds off the distance for him and him at first. But the first five cars now are rotating quite in a similar fashion. But we are now uh, seven minutes down. And Valentin Persia is winning, and the French flag being waved by Mrs. Sartell. Uh, Jerome himself is down, I think, in about eighth at the moment. Yep, just behind Van der Rels and Schwarzer. But it's... Valentin Persia is taking the lead. Now, you would say that on what we've seen so far, we can see it already. Vaselli saying, no, you're not going to stay in the lead for long. I'm going to try and catch you up. And a mistake there on the brick section. And Persia now has Vaselli on his tail. The large Croatian against the younger... Not the Croatian's old, but the, uh, against the younger Frenchman. Both European champions. And Vaselli now, effectively, who's probably absolutely kicking himself for that error a couple of minutes ago now stalking Persia. But again, you need to make it a clean pass. And this is not an easy second to park on, pass on. Persia is a cracking driver if he can keep his head together. And perhaps not being the fastest and not being the favourite, which seemed to weigh really heavily on him last year. In fact, he's starting number four. And there is a brilliant driving there by Vasey. Just switch to the outside using a bit of extra drive. He's got superb pickup on that car. Both of these are the same chassis. Probably say, oh, and he's got only then in three goes. So through goes Vasselli. He got a kind of a, an open door invitation from Persia. He went out on two wheels. And the Frenchman's going to try and fight back now as he goes to the top corner. But Vasselli with that basic round speed. Persia looking to go left, looking to go right. And then coming now over the double. They're far up, and already Vasselli's gained himself a few inches of daylight. Third place, Stu Wood. Fourth place, Rodeveld. Fifth place, Pekko Ivanen. And we are eight minutes down. Now, interestingly, what really what has to happen and what I think Persiat needs to do is just not let the lead get too big. As Rodenwald is battling, and Rodenwald just just taken third from Stu Wood behind us. And the mistake there by uh, Persiat, he needs to stay within one error, as he was, of our leader Vasselli. As Rodenveld now gets a hurry up. And so, oh, and he's done it again because there he goes, Vaselli. Okay, stick with Vaselli. That's another mistake. It's taking him back down to second again. He's got Rodenveld behind him. He just got himself in the lead again. Now he's going to do it all over again. So Persiat leads. Vaselli in the picture. He is in second place. Rodenveld in the multiple car is third. Fourth place, Stu Wood. Even in fifth, not out of the picture yet. Even at 41-1, faster than anyone last time. Now, even on this quiet period on his own now, he's finally finding the form for the semi-final. This is a bit late, but we are only not even a third of the way down yet. Vaselli is now, as you can see, quicker than Rodenveld, trying to gap him. Wood himself is thinking about having a go at Rodenveld, but Vaselli is now trying to get himself back up to Posey 
And the gap that time round was four, it's just 2.6 seconds, but he gained 0.8 back. So for Selly again, with this basic round speed advantage he has, as Persia makes a minor mistake on the but oh, two wheels up and kind of a praise the moon. The fact is that we have you know, 19 minutes and 45 seconds to go. Persia, uh, Vaselli, if he doesn't make another mistake, will be on Persia at some point. Not that long now, but he's, and he's kind of dragging, half dragging, half leaving Rodenveld behind him. Rodenveld has got Stu Wood doing a very good job of just staying with him. And then you have Pekka Ivanen, the pole man, in fifth. And now, I think, with his head back where he wants it. Rodenveld gets a bit of breathing space from Stu Wood behind. Oh, and again, I really wouldn't like to take 10 pounds that Valentin Persiak could run that brick section the same twice in a row. Let's nip back to uh, Even in the green car for a second, who's uh, on, the main on, the, on the back straight now. I'll keep an eye on the first and second. Even, as you can see, is much, much closer to Wood, and Wood is much closer to Rodenveld. So the podium certainly is within sight. You got a replay. Oh, it's upside down. So let's get with Evenen, the green car. He's got himself back in. He is much, much closer now to Stu Wood. Looking ahead, the gap. Persia's doing a good job of keeping the gap from Vassay, but there's traffic coming. And that might be Persia's problem, actually. He's got around the first car, which is Hiltonen. Evenen looking to try and gain fourth place from Stu Wood. Not quite, only 12 minutes down, 18 to go, and certainly Evenen looks quicker than Wood at the moment. Wood's last lap, 42.0 and a 40.17, so a few tenths gained by Evenen now, and a few more tenths already gained. So even and now looking very heavily like he wants to pick up fourth place, please. And get himself closer at least to a podium. And he's now right on Stu Wood's tail. Let's take two bites there at the cherry into the uh, Sambareses. And again, ran across the ropes in his attempt to get through. Persiet holding the lead nicely against... Uh, the oh, what a mistake. And that's really not what you want when you're, trying, when you're gaining fast. So that's going to slow him right down. I'm sure we'll come back onto it. Still plenty of time, but the time is beginning to tick away. We still have 17 minutes. We're not halfway yet. Let's move to our leaders. They're getting very close. Into the Samba S. It's the five car and then Vasily behind him. As a slight error again on those bricks. And uh, Persia now has Vasily all over him once more. They do have some lapping to do. I think that's Dirk Kellerman ahead of them in the uh, purple and yellow car. Still not halfway through this one. And Persia has led a lot more of it than I thought he would. And I'm sure a lot more than Dario Vasselli wanted him to. And a lot more than I'm certain that Pekka Ivan ever thought would happen. So from four, Valentin leads. He spins round. But much better on the brick section that time. So Vaselli, the Croatian, in the blue and the orange car, is chasing the much more orange machine of Persia. Persia, whose kind of colours change every year. Vaselli has that very recognisable orange base and blue roof to his cars. Be they large-scale touring car, large-scale off-road, or even anything else. A bit of yellow in there as well. As it comes round. Vaselli, now right on the tail. That car behind them is not involved. So it's first and second are right together as we have just came out to half-time, Persiat and Vaselli. The two people who, if you, before you arrived here, you'd said would be battling for the lead of the four-wheel drive main final here in Nen Valley until we saw Evenen's qualifying performances, which kind of threw a cat amongst the pigeons. But that cat has been thrown back out of the pigeons because it's the old hands who are picking up those top two positions. And it's a, a bit of a masterclass from Persiat at the moment of driving within himself and keeping the slightly quicker on individual lap time of Vaselli, but we've seen this before and obviously this is a track which they can run more consistently last year's track you were just hoping for the best to get around the craters this year's track you can race it and that's plain to Persiat he's not 
so happy when things go completely random. And in the background, Ivan, Ivanen has got past Stu Woodhoff. Stu Wood made mistakes. So Ivan's up to fourth. But the first and second is obviously where we're concentrating. Rodenwald still in third place. And they come now down to the Graffle hairpin. Another lap ticked off, and we are now over halfway. 15 and a half down, 14 and a half to go. And I saw really that Vasily had to just had to wait then for Persiat to finish the King Cobra corner because you can't get too caught. Oh, and he's tipped him. But no, that was pretty much that was that was a racing incident, unlike some of the other things which were interpreted as racing incidents. That was a racing incident. And they carry on going. And Persiat very much looking to uh, garner another European championship. Rodeval not out of this because he's just carried on ticking along. And these two are not going as fast as they could now. They're staying each other up. In fairness, even is not out of it because even the distance from first to fourth, 37 seconds. So, you know, it's not like he's out of it. He's made it difficult for himself as uh, Persiat goes very wide after getting a very good drive on that first corner. This time again, a little bit of skidding out the back. You'd think that uh, Ash Turf Kirk with a great grip. It doesn't. He gives, he gives good grip, but the grip's different. It's too, go on. Persiat makes a mistake and wait. So Persiat makes a mistake and waits, and that is given the lead to Vaselli, who I assume will now run. It's the Duke race, Racing replay, see what happens. He just, yeah, he got a, a snap over steer, really wrong, and waits. Great driving by the Frenchman, very fair, but now he's got a problem, and Vaselli's ahead of him. Now, interesting, whilst Vaselli was chasing, at no point did he make a merit or fall over. Both the times he's been in the lead, he has done that. So Vaselli leads now with 13 minutes to go. Second place is Persia on your screen. Third place is Rodenveld. Fourth place is Evenham. Fifth place is Stu Wood. Sixth place, I think, still is Patrick Schweinzer, but he's been dropped by miles now. And already, Vaselli is making his escape. So much so that Rodenveld is beginning to uh, get himself a little bit closer to Persia. Evenham making no real impression on uh, Rodenveld at the moment, so he's mired in fourth. Stu Wood stays fifth. In fact, Percy has decided not to be left, and he's actually now pushing very hard to be actually on the same part of the track. And he is now. So Percy, far from being left, is absolutely competing inch for inch with Vaselli, and he's going to try and do something special there. He does like to get cut up the inside on the brick section, but no. And this is where it went wrong three laps ago. Snap over steer, had to wait, and he did, and now suddenly... Persiat's got a bit of a, a, a spring in his step and a flea in his ear. He just makes a tiny error there. Leap well. I think he'll be fine because he'll get the drive and he'll be able to, to squeeze right back up again as he does a superb run round. Both of them really, really good round that top corner. With lots of speed and holding it straight. And now Persiat trying the outside line. And he had to break rather than ram uh, his teammate in the backside there. Both the MCDs then. It's the number one car. I'm sorry, the number two car of Dario Vasilev from Croatia leading the uh, orange and white machine, the five, four of Valentin Persiat. Sven Rodeveld stays in third. Pekka Ivanen stays in fourth. And the gap between first and fourth is down to 6.6 seconds. So they are getting close. And Rodeveld certainly himself. If these two were to come together, Rodeveld could very easily find himself in the... Uh, the so they have come together. But if they were going to come together, they have come together. Rodeveld is the one who can really gain on that one. Let's see it very quickly. Let's see it again. Coming in through the F returns. Shoot racing replay. Yeah, that was, that was again, no, no harm, no foul. Basically, they were on different lines at different speeds. But the net effect was they both lost uh, two seconds. And Rodeveld, as you can see, will be sneaking into the back of these shots now. We stick on Persiat more than uh, you'll see that behind him. He's got a problem that Rodeveld is there as well, the uh, short course challenge champion. And a couple of seconds behind that, it's Pekka Evenen, who just needs to find that pace he had in the semi-finals, and he'll very quickly get up to the, uh, the top three. Though I do think the, uh, certainly Persia, in, in a way, Vasselli have really shown their, their experience and their class. They found a couple of extra tents here or there on the laps. And certainly Persia, who was looking to be left by Vasselli earlier in this race, he himself is finding a couple of tents within the race as the racer comes out and the experience comes out and the pushing comes out in the French man. So Vaselli and Persia on the same frame now. They go into the Sambareses. They both had a go in the lead. Currently the man having that go is Vaselli. 
And he's just got a little bit of a breathing space, a few yards, a few metres of a, a lead. But the second half of the section is where Perze always, he turns that right hand into the, this, this bit of straight so well. And lost the drive there. Oh, that was very sporting because, in fact, Vesselia made the mistake. He made the error, lost the drive. And Verzi, I'm not going to force the issue here because there's still 9 minutes and 39 seconds to go, which is quite a brave thing to do because Rodeveld's right behind them. And they're not breaking from Rodeveld because they're slowing each other up. And we've lost Hiltonen, the 10 car. Evenen carries in fourth, so at the moment not even making the podium, which is disappointing for the young lad. And Perziat again knows he's fast here. The section where he's very quick is after this corner here, he just turns the... They turn left there. That was the first time that actually um, it's been done particularly well. Van der Elst in the way of the leaders to get out of the way very quickly. But that was the first time we'd seen uh, Selly turn that corner particularly well. And the net result was the gain that has been happening in previous laps didn't happen for Persia. And in fact, Vasily finally has a, a small amount of clear air between him. And in the case of a couple of laps, or even a lap and a half, Vasily now looking a little bit more comfortable. And Persia's under challenge, actually, is going to be Valentin Persia. And that's from Sven Rodeveld, the German. So let's be on let's be on Posiat in second. He's just behind Vaselli. <laughs> he's coming around the corner now, and he's going to be on the main straight now, the orange car of Persiat. With Rodeveld behind him. Right underneath us now on the on the on the tabletop now. And upside down now, and another right way up again, and Rodeveld gets through to second. So Rodeveld takes second. Let's see that one again, the Duke Racing replay. Oh, it's such a combination, not the thing working properly for Persia. And he then lands it and drops it. And Rodeveld says, thank you very much. I'll have that little that, that second place. And the net winner of that one massively was Dario Vasselli. But Rodeveld now has second. And we have seven and a half minutes to go. Persia now first needs to find his way around... Um, Rodeveld, Evenen is happily in, in fourth. Well, not very happy, I doubt. Wood has just had an accident in fifth. But he's still in fifth. And Evenen's had another problem. So I think Evenen's uh, chance of anything has, has disappeared. The car is not doing what he wants to do in this final. Caselli has just lapped Jerome Sartell, but it's now a battle for second here between Sven Rodeveld and Valentin Persia out in the lead. Dario Vassay looking for get back-to-back -back European championships with seven minutes to go. And Rodeveld now, who had the quietest of races, just sneaking up on the back of the leading two. Well, he got his chance when Persia made an error after a kind of a massive tank slap where he can't get the thing pointing in the right direction moment. Now you get on the inside. Look at the inside. It's Persia to pick up second place from Rodeveld. He needs to get the drive off the uh, corner. Now he's very good around here and he's got it. Oh, Rodeveld has a... Oh, he's lucky there. He skylined it and then came back again. Very quick to see that one again. They came off that main straight. He just got a bounce with the Jeep Racing replay and then spins around. But he gets back on the wheels, which is good news for him, bad news for Ethan. But Ethan's dropped way back now. Ethan's right off this path. And really, fourth is the best he's going to do unless it's a problem for one of the top three. But the problem that um, these two have, they're still battling. Rodeveld almost comes in on the brick section into the second place man, Persia. The problem they both have is that their scrapping has allowed Dario Vasselli to break away and establish a five-second lead. There's still a battle for the two... Lower steps of the podium, and oh, it's going to happen now because they've rolled over. And uh, Rodeveld picks it back up again. There's the app. Those little errors have crept in the back end of this race in the last few minutes. We've got five and a half minutes to go. They switch back and through around the Samboresses for, well, they've got five or seven or eight laps to go. 
Rodeval takes second in the multicolored car. Then the orangey car with the white wheels is Valentin Persia. Away by five seconds or so, perhaps six seconds now, is Derek Vazir. And oh, that was an absolute grenading attack there. Let's watch that one again on the uh, Duke Racing replay. Not quite sure what he's trying to do there. Comes under. Absolutely fires it, Persia. He's going to go over the top of... Oh, that's what happened. He, wasn't, he actually fight over and landed on the roof of uh, Rodeval, and that kind of spoiled it all for him. But they're back together again. Again, the gain of that one is... Persia is desperate to uh, move a step up on the podium. Now, remember, we saw a number of cars run out of fuel on the two-wheel drive. We'll have problems in the last couple of sections. Then that could still happen here with four minutes to go. As it stands, Vaselli's looking good for back-to-back -back European championships. But the battle here is very much on for second place between Rodeveld and Persia. And one of them trips up. Pekka Ivanen is ready to try and pick up a podium position. I'm sure that if it stays as it is, Pekka is going to be a very disappointed young man at the end of this race. But he should actually be very proud of what he's achieved. And perhaps in a couple of weeks' time, he will be a very proud young man because he has taken the large-scale off-road world by storm this weekend and will be a force we reckon with for probably another 30 years. But, you know, TQ Early European Championships, which effectively is the world, we had Australia in here, is something never to be poo-pooed. And, and interesting, something to be poo-pooed is the fact that Persia has had a little bit of a problem staying on two wheels. He's going to come up hard and will catch up very quickly with Rodeval. Persia has got a lot of speed in that car, uh, more than Rodeval, who really can't run the pace quite that either he, that either... Persiat nor Dario Vasselli can run, but he's in the problem with this, this track, well the problem is, well, good thing this track, it's not easy to pass, can get passed and obviously the, uh, the nature of the track itself will lead to passing opportunities, but a driver driving well on the line can hold someone back, and that's obviously completely legitimate if you are fighting for position in the main final Vasselli now a long way ahead with uh, three minutes to go Last time round, he was six and a half seconds ahead, and he'll be a bit further this time, I think, as they both of them come up to lap Jerome Sartell in the pink and white Lozy car. A lot of MCDs here, the Turkish brand. They've got their four-wheel drive car working very, very nicely indeed on the uh, AstroTurf, and an uh, interesting interpretation there by uh, Valentin's giving him a pretty good uh, move forward. So Persia still looking to get second place from Sven Rodeveld. First place is long, long gone. We're down to two minutes and 12 seconds. I can tell you that uh, there's no problem for Selly. Very much in a fourth place is Pekka Ivanen. And very much in a fifth place is Stu Wood. Patrick Schweinzer is sixth. And power goes down a bit of slight. Oh, and Rodeveld there gave a little half chance for Valentin Persia to get one step higher on the podium. But Rodeveld, the reigning short course champion until obviously about three hours ago. Still pushing hard. From the inside. Oh, and he has a white round. They're so close here. This is an example of how it's hard to pass. And this is where Persia thinks he's got a chance. And again, he tried. He ran it in a bit long there, hoping he could get back and turn in. But that's uh, beyond the laws of physics. As we come down to a minute and 25. They will get this lap they are, there's two laps left I think but they might just actually get three certainly uh, Derek, oh and Pecco stopped oh dear oh dear oh dear Pecco has stalled and I think Pecco is out of the final I'm very very sorry for Tara but Pecco has gone from the final perhaps just as well he wasn't leading at that point that had been too cruel too much to take right let's get back to our second and third battle which is currently oh and the say just rolled over. Our second third battle is now just going down the uh, the bumps into the hairpin. The Vaselli rolled over that time and had a lap of 44. We're down to 45 seconds, so there are two laps to go. And in fact, we've lost we've lost Valentin Persiat. Persiat, where's he gone? We've lost. We've, we're having a, We've lost Persiat. So leading is Vaselli. Persiat's gone. We've got a few seconds to go. Let's, let's pick up our leader. He's he's coming out. Onto the main straight now, back straight now. So Persia has gone. We've lost three cars. Persia's out. Ivanen's gone. Leading now is Vaselli. In second, it's Rodeveld. And in third, I think it's going to be Stu Wood when they get through the next lap. 
And this is the last lap. Vesey's got one more lap. Rodeval's got one more lap. Once again, there's been some fuel miscalculation somewhere. Vesey carries on going round. He is leading. But in the background, you can see the multicolored car that is Sven Rodeval catching him hand over fist on the last lap. Rodeval is, is Rodeval going to do a remarkable thing? What has happened to Vesey? He's like, are you just going slow because he thinks he might run out of fuel? Rodeval now is coming closer and closer and closer. They're going down the back straight. What can Vesey do? He's got about a second in hand. He's come around the top side. Rodeval could become, oh, he made a mistake, Rodeval. But Vesey now turns around. He's got two corners to go. As long as he's got enough fuel, he will finish. He will take the championship. He's come incredibly close to the end. Rodeval almost always oh, rolled at the last game. Rodeval, Vesey takes it. Rodeval will be second. In third place, I do believe it's Britain Stewart takes the final podium position. Fourth place, Schweitzer. Valentin Persiak gets fifth without finishing. Uh, Sartell is sixth. Van der Els is seventh. Kellerman is eighth. Ivan ends up ninth, again with fuel issues. And tenth is Juno Houtenen. Blooming heck. All happening there. The margin of victory in the end was two seconds. It would be one if Rodeville hadn't rolled in the last corner. And Vaselli wins it going as slow.